uyu ni we yari mama uyu ndamubwirwa nakaga yo ndebyifoto nda kuyireba iyo numva ntanezerewe Aje njia muhumba na nzawa nusu shaka no kujicho tu fugan. In 1994, in the East African nation of Rwanda, 800,000 men, women, and children were killed in one of the most brutal tragedies of our time. The killing began on April 7th, the day after the Rwandan president, Juvenal Habjarimana, a Hutu, was killed when his plane was shot down as it prepared to land in Kigali. For 100 days, Hutu militia groups led a genocidal campaign throughout the country, targeting all Tutsis. The international community was essentially non-responsive as the tragedy unfolded. In the first week, 65,000 Tutsis were killed. Then the Hutu militias began broadcasting genocidal propaganda. In a hundred days after the genocide began, the killing finally stopped. Nearly one million people were dead. But this isn't a story about the dead, or about the world's politicians who stood by and did nothing. This is the story of the most vulnerable of the genocide. Women who were victims of the most brutal acts of a dark war. We heard the doors strong. They started shooting. We see another one dying there. We see another one dying there. Then we all lost the courage to fight. We gave in and they opened the door. They entered with machetes, with axes, with holes. People were falling on me about four layers deep. The militia started cutting in two pieces, those who were on top of us. They cut into the first layer the second layer, the third layer. Now after that one, it is me. They raped from every corner. Every woman who was in that church at that time was raped. And they raped me with all my children seeing. I can only remember five men. By the fifth, I had started losing my understanding. When I became unconscious, they kept raping me. I never asked my parents to produce me as a Tutsi. But I'm suffering now because of no other crime than having been born a Tutsi. And I'm paying a price for the sins that I never committed. They said they are going to rape us, but they used the word marry. They said they are going to marry us until we stop breathing. We are leftovers of the militia's sexual appetite, and whenever I think about it, I hate myself. Mm -hmm. 
ndese bamukorera ibintu bibi bitaga kwiriye kuba ari nk'umuntu w'umubyeyi ngo muri cyo gihe nubwo natandukanye na mama numva ko mbaye imfubyi pe when i saw this it was unbearable for me it's when i realized it was war i realized it was genocide it's when i realized i was now an orphan so i gathered courage and decided to walk by myself to wherever i would go i didn't know every step of that hill every grass every tree every stone every house reminds me of 1994 i don't want to go there We were attacked by a gang of Hutu men. One of them hit me hard in the chest. He raped me over and over. And when he was done, he left me there and I was unconscious. Soldiers attacked my uncle's house. They killed him. They killed my aunt. When I heard the bullets, I ran and hid under the bed. The killers did not search the bedroom. They thought they had attacked everybody who was in the house. My auntie had been killed, and they had put the baby on her breasts. So the whole sitting room was full of blood and dead bodies except for the little baby who was alive and sucking the breasts of a dead mother there were many soldiers and when they saw me they asked me whether i knew the cockroaches because that's what they called tutsis they said you look like them we're going to kill you so one soldier took me in the bush to shoot me He looked at me and said, "I can't kill you. I have very few bullets remaining, and they are calling me for battle. There is no reason why I should waste my bullet on you." drink your brother's blood and go After the war my father constantly reminded me this kid is bad that her family is bad that her people that her relatives killed my family that there was no reason for me whatsoever to love that girl But in me I feel she is innocent. But I can't show it to my family members. So what I do when this happens? I go to bed and sleep and shed tears in my bed and keep quiet about it. Let me tell you something that I've never told my family. Deep in my heart, I love my kid. I'm sure they keep telling her I don't love her. But if I had the means, I don't know when or how I would stay with her. My only struggle that I live with always, even if I got the means to stay with her, I'm not sure she will ever accept and love me. After the genocide I have many children that I look after. My brothers and sisters were all killed, but they had children who had survived. So I have seven children that I look after. My children, my orphans, my daughters are my hope. They know I'm their everything. I'm their uncle, I'm their auntie. 
I'm their mother, I'm their father, I'm their grandmother. I am everything for them. So they don't want to hear that I am HIV positive. But that's the reality they have to live with. I am. I live with HIV, which is a legacy of genocide. I'm a mother, but unwilling to be a mother. Whenever I look at this child, I trigger back to the memories of rape. Maybe with time, I will love this daughter of mine. Maybe, but for now, no. I love the first daughter more because I gave birth to her as a result of love. Her father was my husband. The second girl is a result of an unwanted circumstance. I never loved this kid. This is not the way we used to live, but this is the way I am now. I am physically handicapped because of the beatings that I went through. I can't carry anything. It is now that I say it is even good that I didn't kill that boy because he fetches for me water. I don't think I'm a mother. I don't think I'm a girl. I'm something in between, something I don't know. Because a mother must have a home, I don't have a home. A girl doesn't have a child, I have a child. I don't think about Rwanda often. I think about my son. When I think about his life, he's like a tree without branches. He is my life, and if I didn't have him, I don't know what I would be. Tell the world that the international community has a debt because they didn't come to our rescue. They should now come to support us as we deal with the legacy of genocide. What message can I give you? All I see, it is morning, it is evening. A day has gone, another one has come. I didn't know I was pregnant until very late. That's when I started wishing to die and I thought I should commit suicide. I waited for the day to give birth and I would kill the child. But when I gave birth, the child was so beautiful that I developed love immediately. My children, a parent looks at two issues. It is either you are alive today or tomorrow you may be dead. Just in case I'm not alive, I want you to remain with these words. Be friendly, love one another. Learn to be patient, just like I have been patient in the trying moments of this world.